What's up guys, I'm Random Frank P, and today we're gonna be checking out the brand new controversial $550 AirPods Max headphones, as well as comparing these to three other headphone options out there that I think are a better deal. Now this won't be a dedicated review, but more so a detailed kind of overview of my experience, my thoughts and opinions with the AirPods Max versus the three other options, which are gonna be the $339 Bose Headphone 700, we also have the $275 Sony 1000 XM4, or the cheaper option, the XM3, the XM4 is just the newer version, and then the $400 Drop Panda. So all three wireless headphones that I think are just a better option for the money in the end, but we'll still go through it all. Again, talk about my experience, my opinions, and just what I think about the new AirPods Max versus these three other options. So first up, just taking a look at them, like most of Apple products, they do have that clean design. They have a pretty premium look, I'd say. They definitely stand out. The construction here for the ear cups is this anodized aluminum, and they're a matte finish, and just from my handling, they seem to do a pretty good job of avoiding picking up on your fingerprints as well. You do have these nice and smooth telescoping arms to adjust the size of the headband, if you have a larger or a wider head. Um, I don't mind it too much. It's not as satisfying as other, you know, clicky headband adjustments out there. And up top for the headband, it's this really interesting mesh material. And honestly, I kind of like it. Uh, just due to the way it's constructed, obviously, if you just lay it on your head, it will kind of then just sit naturally. And due to the materials, it'll kind of just even out the balance a bit. Uh, but really, just in terms of visuals, you know, talking just purely aesthetics, I really don't mind it at all. They're definitely a nice pair of headphones. So for color options, we have it here in the space gray. It's also available in silver, a sky blue, a light green, a pink color, and clear. Because clearly these headphones are too expensive. I'm just kidding, clear isn't real. Please clap. Also real quick on the side, we do have this digital crown for taking calls, adjusting volume and playback controls. It's pretty much just like a bigger crown like they have on the Apple Watch. And then next to that is the button for toggling noise cancellation, just toggling it on and off. We'll talk about this more in detail in a minute, but first, I really just like the fact that they're on top of the ear cup versus like every other pair of headphones in the world. They either have it on the backside or underneath. It's just more natural that way versus having it up top. And also with the design of the aluminum ear cups, they clash against each other and hard when you're not using them. It's like hitting rocks together. So to combat that, Apple gives you their hearse, the headphones purse, or the hearse that you're gonna to wanna to end up in once you realize this is the case they give you for a $550 pair of headphones. It doesn't make any sense. They looked at this case and thought, yup, that's, uh, that's it, like that's the final case. I mean, hell, we didn't even really go over it yet, but for the other headphones, like the Bose, yup, they include a carrying case. Sony, you know it. And even the Drop Panda headphones, yes. All three have actual carrying cases. What are you doing, Apple? Like, seriously, what kind of case is this? If I ever see anybody like walking down the street just carrying their headphones like this with this case, I'm just gonna straight up just, just ball tap them, just a quick, whew, I'm out of there. They're not even gonna see it coming either because they have those Apple blinders on, you know? Uh, so what is the benefit of this? Um, kind of battery life, you could say, not really though. So when you set down your AirPods Max and just leave them be for five minutes, they go into a low power mode, then after 72 hours of sitting stationary, it goes into the ultra low power mode to preserve battery. But if they are in the actual smart case when you're not using them, they go into that low power mode immediately, then after 18 hours in the smart case, the AirPods Max go into the ultra low power mode. So what the hell does that mean, right? Pretty much, you put them in the case and they go to low power mode. Uh, but where it really gets confusing is Apple doesn't even explain the difference between what they deem low power and ultra low power drainage. So there's no real way for even us to even like test that out because no way to tell you if it's in low power or ultra low power. So it definitely gets confusing. And also with their own verbiage, they always say stationary. When it's stationary, then it goes into low power versus ultra low power. But what if it's not stationary? What if I bring these around with me? What if I move them in that 72 hour time period? What if I put them in my bag, not in the case? Is it still gonna be draining more battery because it's not stationary, so it's not going into ultra low power mode? Who knows? Um, also, guess what? There's no power button. You heard that right. So they didn't include a power button, and they also didn't include a cable for wired listening, and you can't plug the lightning cable into the USB-C port on your computer and get any sound out of these. 
If you want that, you have to drop an additional $35. And the icing on the cake here is there's no passive mode. So if these die, you can't just plug them in and use them and still get audio. No, they have to have power to use them. Um, and speaking of, you know, battery life and stuff, it's really not too bad. It's rated at around 20 hours. And if you plug them in for five minutes of charge, you get an hour and a half of battery. So that's not bad for a quick charge, but again, you still do need to have them actually plugged in to get battery to use them in the first place. In the 20 hours, I, I would say is pretty um, on par for me. They're overall a quieter pair at 100%, so I was constantly having them at full blast. Uh, so it did drain a bit quicker than other reviewers I've been seeing out there rated at like 25 or 26 hours. Uh, but yeah, I found for me 20 hours was pretty accurate. But let's talk about sound quality, because let's face it, that's the most important aspect of buying headphones, especially $550 headphones. So honestly, they sound way better than I thought they would, and I'm, I'm impressed. My initial kind of impressions before even receiving these was that I thought since Apple owns, you know, Beats by Dre, the whole production line, it would have that muddy kind of bloated bass, and it would just be Beats with a, a facelift. But no, it's not. The bass here is definitely present, but it's not overbearing, and I'd say they're well controlled in the low end. On the other side of the spectrum with the higher end frequencies and treble, it's not as bright as I'm used to with my Sennheiser HD 800 S's, so I would like a a bit more sort of sparkle there, uh, but I think in return it makes up for that with the mids and the sub bass. There is just so much presence, detail, and clarity here in the mids that it really complements, I'd say, instrumentals and makes vocals just sound very true to life and natural. So the sound quality here, uh, just a lot better than I was expecting, honestly. I can't lie. I will say one aspect that kind of lacks in is also soundstage. They're not a wide sounding pair of headphones. But again, I'm used to Sennheiser HD 800Ss, so different story there. And I know 95% of you out there are gamers, so that's why I don't get too technical when it comes to the technical terms of audio. I think like a week ago, I used the word sibilance in a mic test video, and you would have thought, judging by the comments, that I was speaking Latin or something. So I understand, I understand. Uh, but also keep in mind that everybody's sort of, you know, perception of audio is gonna differ from person to person. What I look for, what I prefer in music, what genre of music I'm listening to is all gonna factor in, you know, how I perceive audio and how it sounds to me. So what one person might think, you know, sounds good might not be to someone else. Every individual is different in how they perceive audio and what they prefer. So keep that in mind. And before we move on, I'm sure you've heard about their spatial audio, which I feel like is more so just like a marketing thing because it's only for certain like certified movies and TV shows. And what it does is it kind of, you know, emulates surround sound, I'd say. So you have the phone in front of you, you're watching a movie and it maps where you are with a gyroscope and in correlation to where you're looking. So if I'm looking over here, I'm going to hear it more in this ear cup. Are you gonna use that and utilize it really? Uh, not too much, but the bigger factor here is Apple's active noise canceling, which is really, really good. I would say it's in that top tier of some of the best I've heard. And what it does is, for example, if I'm sitting at my desk, you know, I have my PC to the right of me, there's like six fans in there, the HVAC is in the room over, and it just completely eliminates that hum from the heater and the sound of my fans going. Their noise canceling, like I said, is just one of the best out there. And you've also heard about their transparency mode, which sort of mixes in the overall ambience around you and what's going on into your headphones. So it mixes in your surrounding audio into your music. And it does a pretty good job there as well. Uh, great, for example, if you want to you know, keep an ear out for the doorbell, if you want to hear a dog barking. But one weird thing I noticed that it does is when I had that on as I was walking around the house, it sort of like amplified the air around me into my headphones. So, you know, like for example, when you're outside, you're recording something on your phone and just the sound of the wind hitting the microphone, how it kind of like blows it out and has that wind sound. Uh, it did that into the headphones, but just with the air as I was walking. Uh, so not movement friendly, which brings me into the next portion. Uh, these are not gonna be friendly to anybody who is active or moving around. So with the overall build of materials, these come in at 385 grams, which isn't light by any means. These were constantly sliding off my head and just shifting off my ears during use, unless I was sitting perfectly still. So you cannot use these for jogging or working out because they will literally just fall off your head with any sort of movement. The clamping pressure here really isn't that strong either. So if you are laying down or you know working out, they're just not gonna stay in place. So again, if you're standing still, sitting at your desk, getting work done, then yeah, they're gonna be fine. But that use case is extremely limiting. So for $550, Apple isn't trying to compete with Bose or Sony in the market. 
They're competing directly with themselves by driving away any new potential customer at this price point. And you can be one of those out there who's saying, oh, they must not be that expensive if they're already out of stock and not ship until March. For all you know, Apple could have made 500 of each color. So they go off the shelves quick. You see, out of stock. And what that does is it drives hype. It drives demand when something's out of stock. That's what they're doing. For $400, yes, I'd recommend them, hands down. For 550, no, way too expensive. Case dismissed, bring in the dancing lobsters. And by dancing lobsters, I mean the three other headphones we have yet to get to. So let's do that now. So we'll do a rundown of each of these three, just to give you an idea. I think the best mix of design, comfort, good sound quality and active noise canceling is the Bose 700. The best overall value are the Sony's. Great sound quality, they're bass heavy, and a similar sort of noise canceling effect like we have on the AirPods Max. And it's the best overall sound quality, I say Drop Panda. There is no ANC here, but they sound absolutely incredible. You can't even tell that they're wireless. So let's talk about them first up, the Drop Pandas. These headphones are a collaboration with Drop and THX, and I am extremely impressed with the sound quality here, just the final execution. For the price of $339, they are the pricier option out of these other two recommendations, but they're still $150 less than the AirPods Max. And to control your volume and playback control, all that's done with a joystick implemented on the right side. And I will say, it works great. It's just really user friendly, and it is one of the better implementations of an all-in-one button I've seen. But these do something pretty rare. So first, like I said, these don't have that active noise cancellation like the other three feature. But the amplifiers used inside here and their THX gyro technology, the noise floor is practically non-existent. Meaning that using these wired versus wireless, there is not gonna be a noticeable sound difference at all. You're not gonna hear any sort of hissing or that slight sort of airy sound you hear with wireless headphones when your music is paused, you're not playing anything. The best noise floor I've ever heard by far while still keeping that really good sound quality. These are bass heavy, but in a good way. The overall sound signature I'd say is warm, which I always prefer. There's ample clarity in the mids with vibrance and great detail. And the treble does give you a bit of sparkle without being you know, too over the top or harsh. I would say though they lack sort of detail in that treble, but man, just the sound here for being wireless is so good. The next recommendation is the Bose Headphones 700. And I think in terms of actual like visuals and stuff, these are probably what most people envisioned when you think of Apple headphones, you know? This sort of design is very Apple-like. They're clean looking, they're minimal, and kind of futuristic. Plus they're lightweight, so that's a plus for people who do jog or work out. They're gonna be great for that. And the noise cancellation inside is pretty good, I'd say. Just for comparison's sake, I'd rate the Apple uh, AirPods Max at like an 8.5. These I'd give a seven. But what I really like is their app. I know it sounds dumb, uh, but the app for, you know, controlling your music, your ANC levels, uh, creating EQs, it's just really convenient. In terms of sound quality, I'd categorize these as V-shaped, which means heavy in the bass and the high ends. The mid-range does kind of suffer a bit overall, but if you're looking at the Bose 700 as a total package for, like I said before, $340, I think they're the most well-rounded for the price here. For the active user, you know, you go to the gym, you walk around the city, you're on the go, you're, you're looking for, you know, that noise cancellation, while still providing pretty good sound for just $200 less than Apple, highly suggest these. Then we'll talk the Sony's, which I dubbed the best overall value here. So these, the 1000 XM3, uh, but like I said before, the 1000 XM4s, they're 275. These were 155 used like new. Uh, they're just a year difference between the two models. Not too much has changed, which is why I saved money and went the XM3 route. And for the price, whether you go XM4 or XM3, there is no way they can disappoint anybody. And I'm sure you've seen a lot of reviews of people comparing and also recommending these uh, versus the AirPods Max because Sony is the king at active noise cancellation. It's the real deal. I said before, comparison's sake, I'd give the AirPods Max like an 8.5 with ANC. Here, I'm giving Sony a nine. Design-wise, kind of dated, yes, for looks, uh, but they're still on the lighter side, and the headband hinge, it folds in for better portability. The ear cups have touch controls for changing tracks and adjusting volume, you just swipe on the side. And while maybe you don't wanna be physically touching your headphones 24 seven, it is still more convenient than reaching to the top of your ear cups to press a button. There is also a Sony app for EQing and adjusting some settings, but it's not 100% necessary, and it's not really that user-friendly, so you don't need it. 
And they do also have a transparency mode, but I'd say it's eh overall. But the sound quality, they're definitely V-shaped here. A bit too bassy, but that's kind of Sony's thing. But I think just for the price, they do sound great in the end. And while I do have some complaints with the lack of sort of mid presence, again, for the price, it's impossible for these to disappoint anybody. It is a killer value. So again, a quick recap, AirPods Max, they sound very, very good. Apple users, you're gonna love them either way. They're just too expensive for my recommendation. Uh, the Bose Headphone 700, probably the best well-rounded in all the categories overall, I'd say. Uh, then we have the Drop Panda. Well, they don't have active noise cancellation. They are the best sounding wireless headphones I've ever heard. And then the best value, just for the price, the overall sound quality and ANC, Sony XM3, XM4, either way. So, like I said, I pretty much just summed it up. The AirPods Max, they sound really, really good. They impress me, they also disappoint me. And for the price of 550, I personally can't recommend them. My voice is going. All right, so that'll wrap it up, guys. Hope you enjoyed and hope you appreciate the other comparison and recommendations to the AirPods Max if you're interested. If you want to check them out, I have them all listed for you in the description down below. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, show your support. Feel free to follow me on Twitter at randomfrankp. And last, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Well, I hope you enjoyed. Have a good day.